So there's this joke. And it's one that I've been wanting to record for a long time. Now, you know, when you're in a hotel room with time to kill, that's when a lot of times these things happen. And we're going to do it now. It's a joke that was told to me in the 1990s, many, many moons ago, by Mr. Thomas Anderson. And I still remember uh, the day he told it. I don't, well, I don't remember the day he told it. I remember vividly him telling it on a day. But I can't remember exactly what year. But it was somewhere in college. So... That's the kind of time frame we're dealing here. It was one of those things where it's now it's been some time has passed. And as I remember the joke, there's a natural tendency to do some embellishments and some changes probably just from the way you remember it. And you try to remember, you think, well, if I did it this way, it'd be a little bit better. So we're going to try and do it close to the spirit of the original. Maybe I can make some enhancements. We're going to see. Maybe if Tom will watch this and let me know. Okay, up, down, how, how do I do here? And uh, yes, you get to share in the blame for all this, Tom. So that's, you knew that when you told me the joke, that this could happen. So now I want you all get comfortable because this is going to take a little while. To go, it's going to have a, just, you know, a mwah kind of payoff. It's going to be wonderful. So we're, gonna, we're going back to the 1930s, okay? Depression era. Things are tough, you know, and. Our story starts with a couple of guys working construction. You know, one of them's skinny little wiry guy, you know, maybe not the toughest guy on, you'd, you'd think to see there, but he's he's working hard, he's laying bricks, he's carrying bricks, they're, they're building a building. And he's got this other guy he works with who is absolutely just massive. He's, he's six foot five, he's a lot of muscle, also a lot of belly. It's Popeye and Bluto, really, that's what we've got going on here. Only this this little guy is not a fighter. He's not going to want to take swings at anybody. He doesn't. He just want any problems. He's a good guy. The other guy, no, he's he likes problems. He likes causing conflict. Likes drinking, and uh, he's always on this guy's case. Always threatening to beat him up, and it's just been a bad work environment for this guy. But it's the thirties. Guess what? You know, happened for a bad work environment in the thirties. You got to work in that work environment, and this guy is just having a really tough time of it. So one day they're working, you know, next to this tower of the building here. And there's a, there's a, a the section of it that's there's a real spire that goes up really high. And they're shuffling bricks up and down. And the one guy turns and goes, hey, Ned, you know what we're going to do here? We're going to have a contest. I'm going to take a brick and I'm going to throw it up in the air as high as I can. And you're going to take a brick and you're going to throw it up in the air as high as you can. And if my brick comes down first, you get to live. If your brick comes down first, I'm going to beat the ever-living tar out of you. And they're like, why? Why would you want to do that? I don't know. It's Tuesday. So they both get their bricks. He goes, well, what if I don't? You know, he probably say, well, Dad, I'm not doing that. Well, I'm just going to beat you up. It's like there's no win here. So they both get their bricks. And Ned says a prayer, please, Laura, I just don't want to get beat up today. You know, I don't want any of this. They both get their bricks, and they're ready, and they both throw the bricks up in the air. And it's a good 10, 15 seconds. But the bully's brick hits first. And Ned's looking. He can't even see the brick. It's gone. And the bully is like just enraged. He's completely crazed over this, but he can't do anything. He, he lost the bet. So the day goes on. They work their 12 hours or whatever. He goes, as he normally does, to the bar, gets nice and drunk. The bully does. The bully gets nice and drunk and angry, and he's just wanting to take this out on someone. So he shows up, 2 o'clock in the morning, drunk as hell at home. And the wife's mad at him. She's screaming at him. He's screaming at her. There she's swearing at him. He's swearing at her. And things are escalating. Now, thankfully, it's not like, you know, the bully beats his wife. We're not, we're not going that dark. But words were said. And words, words have an impact on your life, especially for little Jimmy. Now, little Jimmy is a kindergartner. And the son of the bully, we're not even giving the bully a name. You know, the bully doesn't deserve a name. Okay, we're not even we're not even giving him a name. He's just a the bully. But the son of the bully is a good kid. His name's Jimmy. And Jimmy's hearing words. He doesn't even know what they mean that they're being screamed at him. It's just unreal. And there's one that makes no sense whatsoever. None. It's, it's not even a swear word for us. He doesn't know what this means. 
So he goes to school the next day and you know, kids are taught. If you got a question, ask the teacher, right? It's the safest place to go is school. So he walks to school and he, he goes into the teacher and he says, you know, teacher, my parents were fighting last night and I heard a word, I don't know what it means. Could you tell me what it means? And the teacher's thinking, oh, this is not class. Excuse me for a minute. We were gonna handle this as such. So he walks outside with him. Jimmy, look, you're a good kid. I'll do it, but not in front of the class because we don't want to expose them to anything. I'm sorry that you have to go through this. Um, what was the word that you heard? And little Jimmy says, blue bonnet. And the teacher just slaps him right across the face. And he's like, but what, what was that for? I don't even know. And what did you say? She, he said, blue bonnet. Smacks him across the other face. And his face just, just, don't you ever say that again. And then she sends him to the principal's office. And he's, Jimmy's like, what was that? So he goes to the principal's office. Again, still trusting. Still has trust. And he says to the principal, now Jimmy's known, be a good kid. He walks in, his face is red. And the principal says, Jimmy, what happened to you? Well, I, I asked the teacher if, if you know, there was, I said there was a word my parents said in a fight, like my dad said in a fight with my mom. I didn't know what it meant. And so I asked her what it was and she slapped me twice. And the principal's like, this is, this is out of control. What the heck is, I have to have a talk with her because this is, you should just, you're supposed to answer. <sighs> Jimmy, uh, I promise I'll try and, and, and figure out what's going on here. Okay, we're, we're gonna take care of this. I'll tell you what the word means, okay? What word did, what word did you know, your, your, your father say in the fight? And, uh, and Jimmy says, blue bonnet. And the principal grabs him by the shoulder, he throws him with the desk, and he just pounds his ass for like 10, 15 minutes, and it's a and then he, he grabs him because you're expelled from this school. I never want to see you again. And throws him out the door. And Jimmy's like, what? It, what could this mean? What I, I don't understand. And he's walking home dejectedly, just just beating on all ends. And he's like trying to figure out what's going on. And a police officer stops him. Officer O'Grady. And Officer O'Grady is like, Jimmy, you should be in school, young lad. What are you doing here? He says, I'm expelled. Expelled? You don't expel a kindergartner for anything. What, you come in with a gun? No, no, I, I just asked a question. A question? How do you get expelled for a question? Jimmy, you, you tell me your question. I'll answer your question. The police officer knows to take care of children. So, Jimmy thinks about this because he hasn't got a good track record here, you know, but he, he knows Officer Grady forever. So he says to him, well, last night, my father was fighting with my mother. Oh, he's home drunk again, is he? I, I don't know, I just heard a lot of yelling. You poor kid, you know? Don't worry, you're gonna be fine someday. Everything will be okay. Your father is, we'll, we'll figure out a way to straighten him up. But you tell me your question. What did he say? What did the old drunken man say? Well, he's fine with my mother. And then he said a word I didn't understand. And I asked the teacher and she slapped me. And then I asked the principal and he pounded me and expelled me. Oh, for heaven's sake, mercy's sake. Boy, what word could it have been? He says, Blue bonnet. And the police officer takes out like a billy club and just whacks him across the shin and then drags him into it and arrests him. Takes him in, throws him in jail. So he's in jail. In solitary confinement. For a week. And then his trial comes up. He's had bread and water. And the judge says, Oh, Grady, Grady, what do you, what do you, Come over here. What are you doing to me? This is ridiculous. Why do you have a five-year-old here in solitary confinement? Wait till you have the charges, sir. Little boy, would you please explain to me what's going on? And, and now he's, he's half dazed at this point. He's not even eating right. He's like, well, sir, my parents were having a fight. And my dad said a word I didn't understand. And I asked the teacher. And she slapped me. 
And then, um, you know, I asked the principal, because he sent me to the principal's office, and he, he piled me and expelled me. And then Officer O'Grady, I asked Officer O'Grady, and he whacked me across the shins and threw me in solitary confinement. Now, the judge is like, O'Grady, okay, I'll have your badge for this. This, oh boy, what word could you possibly have said? I don't want to tell you. He's figuring this out. This isn't good. You have to tell me I'm the judge. Whatever I tell you to do, you have to do. Tell me what the word is. He said, fine. It was blue bonnet. 25 years hard labor. So, he's up for parole in about 15 years. And so they go, he goes before the parole board. They said, well, there's, there's not even really a crime defined on. Young man, what, what are you in for? He's about 20 now. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. That You wouldn't believe me. There's no point in going through all this. Well, we have to go through all this with the parole board, so you're going to have to tell us the story. Fine, fine. When I was, when I was in kindergarten, my parents were having a fight. My dad's drunk. Out of his mind, he's screaming all kinds of stuff. But he screamed something I'd never heard before. So I asked the teacher what it was. And she slapped me and sent me the principal. So I asked the principal. He paddled me and said, expelled me from school. The officer asked me why I'm not in school. So I said, told him the whole story. And he said, well, what was the word? What was the word that it could possibly have been? So I told him. He dragged me into prison. I went up for trial. They gave me 25 years hard labor. And the parole board's like, that none of this makes any sense. This can't possibly have happened. There has to be an inquest. What word could you have possibly said that would cause all this to happen? And the guy said, blue bonnet. Parole denied. So, 10 more years go past. Now, he's, he's 30. Goes up a different parole board. And they say to him, why, why are you, you know, they're, they're trying to release him here. Why are you, why are you, you know, why, why are you up here for, you know, what's your crime? There's no crime listed. Well, he goes, let me tell you the story. I was five years old. And then my, I asked my teacher about a word that my father said when he was screaming at my mother. And then uh, she slapped me and sent me to the principal who paddled me and expelled me. And then I got, I was walking down the street and they arrested me, not for truancy, because I asked them about the same word. And then I went before the judge and he gave me 25 years hard labor. And they looked at him like, um... But what was the word? He goes, if you think I'm telling you what the word is, you're crazy. Because I am not going to I'm not gonna suffer from this word anymore. Okay? I don't know what it means. I'm never going to know what it means. I don't care to know what it means. Just let me out of prison. And they said, well, clearly you've learned your lesson. You're not going to commit whatever. I don't know what's going on. Let him out. So he's, he's let out. Father's long dead. Drank himself to death. Mother, somewhere. He has, I don't know where to go. So he's, now he's just stuck walking down the street. And as he's walking down the street, he sees this, this blonde woman, about, about his age, right about 30, very pretty. And she's looking at him. She's looking at him hard. She's like, Jimmy, is that you? He's like, Jennifer, is that you? It's, it's been 25 years. And she says to him, what happened? You just disappeared from kindergarten. He said, I don't even know how you recognize me. Well, it was such a strange day. I, I, I remember so much. I remember watching you leave the room and then I never saw you again. I've been thinking about you forever. No one knows what happened to you. He said, well, I can tell you some of the story. I can't tell you the whole story because I got to leave a part out because every time. He says, to tell me what happened. He said, all right, I'll tell you what happened. I went up to the teacher. I asked her about the word that my father had said when he was screaming at my mother. And when I said the word, 
the teacher slapped me and twice. And then she sent me to the principal who paddled me and then expelled me. And she and Jennifer's like, oh my God. Oh no, no, it, it gets better. Then I'm walking home expelled, wondering what the heck's gonna happen when I, my dad hears about this, even though it's his fault. And I run to officer, what was his name? O'Grady? It's been so long. And he offered to help me. I, I told him the story and then he whacked me across the angle of the billy club and he threw me in the solitary confinement. And and Jesus like For 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 what? No, it getting his power. Can I go before the judge? You think the judge is gonna say, what's going on here? This doesn't make any sense. And he did at first until I said the word. And then I got 25 years. And at 15 years, I came up for parole, and they all thought this was just completely crazy. But until you say the word, and then I got they, they put me back in prison. And then finally, when they were releasing me, they asked me again. I finally said, no, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it ever again. Nothing good has ever happened to me when I said this word. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's just not going to happen. And she said, you gotta tell me the word. No, 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 no. Nothing, nothing good has ever happened to me when I've said this word. I am not saying the word. She said, I promise you, that I, I won't do anything bad to you. And she said, you know, I, I, this is me. You know me. We were, we were best friends in kindergarten. So he said, well, I've got no life. What have I got to lose? I'll just, I'll just say the word. I'll just, fine. She said, the word was blue bonnet. And she went, oh, I've heard that before. He said, you have? He said, yes, yes. And my father, a few years ago, my father was a pilot. And there was this, this couple, these two people, and he was given a plane. It was one of those old planes, you know, the ones you could still slide the windows back. This, you know, they were so old, it's a big propeller kind of thing. And he was just flying these two people in a small little plane. And the, the one guy is smoking this big old cigar. You know, those rich people who do, did all that stuff. And the other woman is this woman in furs and diamonds. And she's got this little annoying dog. I think, I don't know if it was something fuzzy and little. I don't know. My dad wasn't into dogs. He couldn't tell me. He was something fuzzy and little. And... This woman is just complaining to this guy. You have to put out your cigar. It's, 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 it's absolutely atrocious. It smells terrible. You're sticking up my dog. You're all, your dog already stinks, lady. I'm not giving up this cigar. And he's puffing away at this cigar. And this goes on for a good 20 minutes, them arguing back and forth. Until finally the woman slides open her window, grabs the guy's cigar and whips it out right out the window. That will be that, not from that cigar. And this guy's not going to put up with that. He's oh yeah, so he grabs the dog and he whips the dog out the window. Now, Jimmy's in, in trance. He's like, he threw the dog out the window? She, and Jennifer's like, yeah, absolutely. He threw the dog out the window. Is that when your dad heard the word? No, not just yet, because... The, the woman screamed and they both looked out the window. And the woman said the word. But it, it was because of what she saw. Well, what did she see? She said, the dog was out there hanging on to the wing. For dear life, and it's just, its hair is all blowing back. And it had something in its mouth. And you know what it was? And he said, the cigar? She said, no, it was a brick. This is kind of odd, you know, that's just kind of odd. And Jimmy's there like, okay, so do you know what the word means? She said, yeah, but you know what, I can't explain it to you here. You'll have to come over to the house. Well, I don't know, is, is that okay? That I come, is that Mr. Prisoner coming over? Says, no, no, no. It's okay. My, my husband's a pilot now, too. And, you know, I guess you pick a father figure, you know. And, and so he's a pilot. He's leaving tonight cross-country. He won't, he'll be gone for a couple days. So, I mean, I can have you over. He'll never even know. Actually, 
I can have you over in it. You'll never know. And, you know, Jimmy, he's been in prison for 25 years, but, I mean, not much to do there but lift. So Jimmy, he's, he's quite, you know, he's physically fit. And apparently Jennifer, used to adjusting to things, I guess. I don't know. She, however it goes, this is what happened. It's the story. So they, he says, well, how am I supposed to know when your husband's gone? I don't want to walk in when your husband's still there. This isn't going to end well. I've had enough bad luck. Here's what we'll do. I'll wait till he's gone. There's a tree out in front of the place. You can hide behind that. It's huge. When he's gone a good 10 minutes, I'll flip the lights on, off, on, off in the front, in the front room. And then you can know to come over. First good thing that's happened to him ever saying the word blue bonnet. So he hides a key. She tells him the address. He goes there at night. He's hiding behind the tree. So now he's got two things to be excited for. Number one, he's finally going to learn what blue bonnet means. His whole life ruined by this expression, this phrase, blue bonnet. Destroyed his life. He's finally going to find out why. And he's finally going to have some sort of affection from another person in the last 25 years. It's wonderful. So he waits with the absolute band breath. He's there. He's looking. He's ready. He's ready. This is this, this, these. This, this light's flicked. It's when the lights go boom and on off, on off, he's ready to go. And it feels like an eternity. He's just there watching, waiting. And the lights flick on off, on off. And he bolts across the street. And bam, he gets run over by a bus and killed. So, what's the moral of the story? Can you guess? Always look both ways when crossing the street. Da -da 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 -da